feed the man himself? Yeah. Of course we do. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only David Soul! So, um, it's great, but before we get on to talking about the Cuban project, let's just talk about that time and that car over there, you, bouncing around in the 70s. You must have had the time of your life. Just tell us about that period. It was a bit, it was crazy. The 70s was, uh, there was, it was not a PC period, let's put it that way. No, it wasn't. And uh, yeah. started to fit right in with that because we, Thank you goodness. we uh, <laughs> I said, the show was kind of an outlaw show. We were good guys, but we were outlaws. Certainly in the, in the height of the LA PD, we would go downtown and race around downtown in our car. It was our downtown, you know? And as soon as we did that, they banned us. So um, we couldn't drive around down there anymore. But Paul and I had a wonderful time. We had a great crew. Uh, we worked very hard. We were, you know, both of us are very perfectionists when it comes to work. But when it comes to play, we played hard <laughs> and uh, kind of ran the studio, I think. Oh, but you did, yeah. Yeah, we really did. <laughs> it was great. Like, I'll bet you it was epic times. What David uh, was saying to us yesterday, that basically uh, having a, a cop badge because you're on a cop program, driving around in that Grand Torino, basically you just tore up the streets of L.A. Pretending literally any time you wanted. You broke uh, quite a few violations, I gather. Uh, they, um, well, I said, they, they finally banned us from uh, <laughs> driving in downtown Los Angeles because uh, we did break about every law possible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Uh, do you still keep in touch with Paul? Oh, yeah, no, Paul's a dear friend and will be all my life. Fantastic. He's here in the UK now, you know, he's, uh, he's touring with uh, Fiddler on the Roof. That's right, yeah. Yeah, he played, uh, early on in his career, he played uh, the young revolutionary. And now he's playing the old man. The old man, yeah. It'd be great to get yeah. you two back together and get you over at that Grand Torino over at Lancaster Insurance. Well, I could twist his arm. <laughs> <laughs> nice people fantastic. I've had here today, uh, you know, I can, I'm sure he'd like to come. Now, um, one, of the, one of the things that's the opening scene of Starsky and Hutch, and I know we ask this, uh, you get asked this all the time, but it had an effect actually on your, on your future, was that fantastic leaping off the wall onto the, onto the hood of the car. Uh, one of the stupidest things I did in my entire life. Um, uh, I, I made the decision to land on my butt uh, in midair, actually. Uh, it just seemed too simple to jump down from a wall and just kind of jump down on, the, on, on top of, you know, on your feet. So I thought I'd do something a little acrobatic. And uh, since my brains are in my butt anyway, so I, 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 I said, oh, I'll do something, uh, you know, and uh, give, give it a little bit of uh, pizzazz. And I paid for it, believe me, I paid for it. It is not something I want to, that you should do at home, take it out. And, um, and of course, I've had a couple of other things that happened to me along the way, which have uh, turned this once physical specimen <laughs> into a mere skeleton of Oh, don't was. say that. I'm not being funny. I don't know about you ladies, but he still looks brilliant, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah I think mean, you look absolutely brilliant. No, yeah, well, thanks. Uh, well, listen, now let's bring it up to date because uh, we just watched this a brilliant film about Kim and so I think the adventure sounds incredible. Uh, it started with a phone call to the man sitting beside you, uh, Mr. Danny Hopkins. Yeah. Um, Danny, seriously, he didn't just ring you up, did he? Well, David had been told about the, the car on, on Cuba previously. He, he, he basically wanted to know how to proceed in, in, in the way that they could restore it, get it back on its feet. Um, and also he needed to find a way of getting the parts to the car as well. So he, he called me at the office and I, I remember the call came through. It was like, hi, is that Danny Harkins? This is David Saul. And I just immediately stood up and looked around the office to see who was winding me up. And uh, no one was on the phone. And within a minute, I realized that it was the man himself because he was talking so passionately about the project. And it is uh, astounding. The, the, the car, Hemingway's final car, the last car Hemingway owned, was pulled out from a garage. Nobody knew it existed. Um, and the museum on Cuba wanted to find out a way of doing it. And David contacted me because I've got quite a lot of connections in the business. The first thing I did was think, well, this, this project needs cash to, to make it happen. 
So I phoned a few people and, you know, Lancaster stepped up, they stepped up to the mark and they put their money where their mouths are and they funded this project. So I'd like a big round of applause for Lancaster yeah, Insurance yeah. for actually uh, stumping up the cash for doing this and continuing to support it now. Because it's not an easy thing to do because a, as David will tell you, there's a lot of politics and stuff involved in this which isn't easy. Just to, just to tell you what the politics are, for those of you who don't know, uh, Cuba in the 50s had a, 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 there was a Cuban Missile Crisis and there was an embargo. So their next door neighbour, America and Cuba, they're not allowed to trade with each other. In fact, David, as a good old American, is not even allowed to travel to Cuba. There is no trade links between the two countries. So thinking about doing a 55 Chrysler in that country, how do you do it? How do you get the pass? How do you get this man there? So David, tell us how you did it. <laughs> First of all, you had to get a passport. Yeah, well, I mean, it goes back even a little bit further. I've been, I've been going, um, I got my UK citizenship in 2004. And, that, and I've dreamed of going to Cuba since I was a kid, since I read Old Man of the Sea. Many, many years ago, I mean, I was about 15 years old. And uh, Hemingway was my uh, literary hero. So when I finally got my passport, I was able to go to Cuba, the UK passport. Wow. Now, this is very strange because one of the freedoms that Americans are supposed to enjoy is the freedom of travel, going wherever they so choose. They can get into North Korea, they can get into Iran easier than they can get into Cuba, which is really stupid. So anyway, I got my UK passport, and in 2005, I made a trip, my first trip to Cuba and became very, very good friends with the curator of the museum, which is the home where, where Hemingway lived for 22 years. And uh, in one of my subsequent trips there, uh, the curator of the museum said, oh, listen, hey, David, we've, um, this car has been dragged out of, as Danny said, dragged out of the jungle. It's been, uh, it's stories around it are replete myths have arisen and so forth, but we have it now, and we need your help. Can you help us find the parts to fix the car, to restore the car to its original state? We have the workers here, of course they do, the, you know, the panel beaters and the uh, mechanics in, in Cuba are wizards. They're absolutely okay. magicians. They make anything work. You know, we talk about, uh, we don't, we, this doesn't work anymore, and throw it away. They don't throw anything away. And if you, if you go into somebody's kitchen, they're making a piston over in the corner. You know, they got all oh, these old lathe machines and they make everything. Anyway, they asked me if I could get these parts. And I don't know much about restoring cars, but I do know something about Hemingway and I wanted to be of help. That's why I said yes. So I came back and that's when I called Danny. And that's how it started, right? So now we're down to uh, getting, we found a supplier in the United States. The, the tragic thing about that, David, is, it, is when, you know, you, you said to me, find us a, a supplier, and we found one. There is a heroic supplier of these parts who should be being, songs should be written about this guy. Put him in the, in the uh, yeah. Promo. But we can't talk about him and we can't mention his name because if we did, he might get in trouble. And that's a crime. That's wrong. That's and, absolutely. So, and the first thing we want to try to do is protect him. So uh, anyway, we've got we've got uh, three shipments of parts down to Cuba via the UK, and uh, <laughs> so we sent them here. And uh, what they do with it here, we don't know. And, you know, and they send them to uh, I guess they send them to Cuba. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, that's the only way to get anything into Cuba. You can't send it directly from America, so you have to go around Robin, and that's where Danny and the team come in. The Practical from. Classics Workshop um, is now a parts laundering outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any police in the audience? So we got two, two projects going here. One which is very much a part of Lancaster, and thank God for Mike Brewer and company. And the other, and Danny, and uh, Practical Classics, and that is the restoration of this car. Uh, they don't even know how much, how important they are to that restoration. And the guys who are working on it down in Cuba are fantastic. And the other project is, we, well, we felt that a story needed to be told about this, which is what you've seen a part of today. This promo, this video promo, is a part of a, an extended uh, 90 minutes film that we're going to do covering this whole story from beginning to end. And it should be a fascinating, a fascinating story. What I hope for is in the future, 
when this car is done, after all the problems have been solved and we can move on and actually get the car done, if we can bring that car back to this show. Oh, yeah. Uh, I put it on display for a weekend before it goes back to where it belongs, which is the museum in Cuba. Yeah, that'd be epic. You'd like to see that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Eh? We'd all love to see that. Everybody 55 Chrysler, right here at the Classic Motor Show, that'd be epic. Um, so, the car, when it's done, obviously it's gonna be, uh, as we heard up there, it literally will be priceless, this car. And these guys working on it, they don't know that yet, do they? They don't know how important this car is to the rest of the world. This is Hemingway's car. Yeah, they, they, they know how important it is for them because he is a favorite son in Cuba as much as he is in the United States. He lived there 22 years. He is revered. They, and they care about the work they're doing. They're not putting a price tag on it. They're not getting paid for this. Yeah. Nobody's getting paid. Yeah. It's all gifted. And this is what's extraordinary about it. So I'm very proud to be part of this operation with the same, to have the support of people like yourselves. At the same time, I'm, it's a daunting project because uh, we are risky. We could, we could get into some trouble. Although if anybody came after us because we're helping, so <laughs> helping restore a car for Ernest Hemingway for a museum, I think there'd be more than uh, more than a couple of people standing up and saying, "What the hell's going on here?" <laughs> well, don't worry. We've got about two thousand people here. Going to keep it very, very quiet. We're yeah, not going to tell anybody, are we, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, that was absolutely amazing. What a great story to tell. It's a real honour getting you up on the stage, um, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know to, to top that. You've packed the hall. You can hear a pin drop in here. It's nice and silent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only David Soul. And let's not forget Danny Hopkins. How good is that? And I can't wait to see that. That's going to be absolutely brilliant.